The PB Pro 9.5 inch trainer. Uh, I get a decent amount of questions about these and this brand itself actually focuses a lot on their trainer. They do make infield gloves, yes but they put a ton of focus on this. This trainer here is a little bit on the softer side, uh, kind of in between like a Gold Glove Elite and then like Car the Hide, Steer Hide leather. It's not low quality and bad, I'm just saying that it's slightly softer. The more and more that I actually take ground balls with trainers, the more and more I start to like them and think that maybe everybody should start using them a little bit more. I've owned trainers for a long time, but they just don't get used. Whether you're using one of these with a friend or like against a wall or literally tossing the ball up and then practicing quick little short hops, I think it's worth it. But what you don't wanna do is spend like 150 bucks on a trainer and then let it sit in your bag and just never use it. So if you have it, use it. I've had three total trainers now and this is actually my favorite one out of them. And I'm kind of surprised by that because the leather on this, it's not like it's bad, but it is softer. And so the 44 is like the same kip leather they use on all their gloves. And I like it, I like the way it feels, but I think having just softer leather kind of makes sense. You get a little bit more of a feel on the actual palm and you're not using this for anything crazy. So it's really not necessary to have like super nice leather. So Ron Washington works with the Braves. He's like the infield defensive coach. And so he's like extremely dedicated to using this trainer. And he's actually one of the people who helped design the actual glove itself. It's a small difference, but the way that your hand fits in it, it makes you use your actual hand to catch the ball just a little bit more because what we tend to do is catch the ball kind of with the web so that our fingers and nothing actually gets hit. Realistically though, you want to be catching the ball more in your actual hand and a little bit of your palm. So the way your hand fits into the glove, that's what it's doing. It's helping you catch the ball here a little bit more because that's the easiest spot to transfer. As an infielder, that's where you should be picking the ball up. And that's the whole point of this. If you're ever using this in practice or against a wall like I'm doing right now, you're never trying to like intentionally catch up in the web. The point is to really use your hand and work on transfers. Let's talk about one of the drills they actually run. So if the ball's in front of you, you're two hands up and through. If the ball's to the left, it's just that one hand, just glove hand, and you're pushing back where the ball came from. You're not going like this out. On the right, it's the same thing, backhand, going through the ball where the ball is coming from. So straight forward. The whole point and the reason he has them do it is one, it's the small things, it's the fundamentals, just constantly doing it. Boom, boom, boom. But the big emphasis is pushing through the ball, right? Because on a backhand, it kind of looks cool and we tend to see it a lot where you go like, Wah the thing is, is if you mess that up, you are quite literally just throwing the ball away. If you're going through the ball like this, as it's coming through, if you do mess up a little bit, it's gonna stay in front of you, you can still make a play. You're going like this, you mess up a little bit, stays in front of you, you can still make a play. It doesn't matter how good you are, these are the kind of things that you're just always gonna do. I mean, we're talking about guys like Dansby Swanson, Ozzy Alves, now Robinson Cano is actually with the Braves, but the small things make a huge difference, and a lot of times the small things will never stop. It's like hitting off of a tee. MLB players still hit off of a tee. Doing this like against the wall is sort of like a fielding version of hitting off of a tee by yourself. Yeah, when your glove is this small, you have to 100% force yourself to just like pin the ball. Like no room for errors. You have to just catch the ball like with your hand. A little side note, when you are practicing transfers like this, this is also a time to actually practice picking the ball up correctly. You got it. He can go up in there and get it, whole hand. Not go up in there, half a fingers like this. He go up in there, whole hand. And by the time he come out, he get his grip. It's muscle whole memory. And come out and he get his grip. Also, another thing that might be super obvious to some people, but wasn't super obvious to me until a little bit more recently. I always try to have my whole hand in the glove like this. It's honestly not a great idea. If you pay attention, a lot of guys keep that thumb actually out here. So when they're actually receiving the ball, it's just your four fingers in the glove. And then as it comes out, it turns into a little four seam fastball. Basically any trainers out there are gonna work, but I would say if you had to pick one, so far this has been my favorite. It just feels the most consistent and I just like the design itself. Like I said, it's really making you use your hand to like hold the ball instead of using like the comfortable part of the glove up by the web. If you wanna hear me talk more about trainers, you should actually go watch my other video because 
We talk about a trainer that specifically came from Korea, but the glove itself came from Japan. It's a World Pegasus. It's really weird. It has this like duck foot on it. Go check it out.